These days, some of Hollywood's most elaborate movie roles can require mounds of makeup, hours of prosthetics, and a little help from the power of CGI. Underneath it all, however, there's usually still a real-life human being with a real-life, often beautiful, human face. Here are some movie aliens that are actually gorgeous in real life. Zoe Saldana has undoubtedly made a lasting mark in the sci-fi universe, playing Natiri in 2009's Avatar and Gamora in both the Guardians of the Galaxy series and Avengers movies. The blue-skinned alien in the former film was 70% CGI, with Saldana becoming almost entirely unrecognizable in her role. She later told STV, I thought director James Cameron did a really good job of putting Natiri together. I thanked him for making her look hot. I mean, Natiri is very sexy and lean with a really cute bod. I'm in pretty good shape, but I don't look that buff. However, by the time she had made a name for herself as Gamora, being known only as an intergalactic starlet might have been starting to get on Saldana's nerves. She told the new paper, I'm not a sci-fi sex symbol. I don't know why I'm always in space. Maybe being a space babe moves me. As a woman, particularly a woman of color, the roles set on Earth are a little too typical for me. While elaborating on the sentiment to the Daily Telegraph's Stella magazine in 2017, Saldana said, So I think science fiction has given me the ability as an artist to be colorblind and genderblind, and to imagine and reinvent myself and be the chameleon actors are supposed to be. Eric Banner got the full Romulan transformation playing bad guy Nero in the 2009 reboot of Star Trek. Complete with facial tattoos and his species signature ears, the Aussie actor actually looked so different. His own agent didn't even recognize him on set. Banner told the Sydney Morning Herald, It was amazing. The first time you put it on and you realize that you can't read facial expressions, everything you've done before is in the bin. Because if you do that, the audience won't see your face move at all. So you're sort of having to push through the prosthetic. Aesthetics. Clearly, Banner did a great job of it. The film was met with critical acclaim, and years later, he's still delighted when fans realize it's him under the mounds of makeup. In 2013, he told Huff Post, I still get people today who just saw Star Trek and had no idea. That's a huge kick. No, I love that. Fly of the Concours alum Jermaine Clement got a menacing makeover for the third installment of Men in Black in 2012, playing head honcho bad guys Boris the Animal. What made him so unrecognizable? Well, maybe it was the fact that it looked like his goggles were embedded in his face. Nevertheless, Boris was genuinely hideous. And as the actor recalled, I think the first day we put the makeup on, it took eight hours. Arguably, the best thing about the villain was that he just looked so darn cool. The special effects superstar behind the project, Rick Baker spoke to Digital Trends about making Boris come to light. He explained, In the script I got originally, he was a biker, but they described him as Dennis Hopper from Easy Rider. I said, you know what? I think he should be intimidating. He should be a bearded, dark-haired, badass f***ing biker from space. Apparently, the costume was so outlandish, Clement himself lived quite the lonely life when he wasn't decked out as Boris. He said, When I would turn up for lunch without my makeup on, no one would talk to me as they didn't know who I was. You think he's listening? Let's taste it. Jermaine's a good-looking guy, isn't he? There he goes. Yeah, I must have. Yeah. Algerian beauty Sophia Batella was graced with an Oscar-nominated makeup team behind her Star Trek Beyond character, Jailer, Playing a warrior decorated with black facial lines and a very heavy defined forehead, Batella was practically unrecognizable to fans. Joel Harlow, the Academy Award-winning makeup artist responsible for her look, dished to inverse about the painstakingly long four-hour process that brought Jailer to life. He said, It's deceptively elaborate with lots of intricate dissections. The challenge was to strike a balance and blend it to where you don't know where the prosthetics are. The mouth, nose, and chin are Sophia, otherwise everything else is all a prosthetic. The results made it nigh on impossible to tell what part of her is real and what part was created by Harlow. But how did Batella feel about having to endure hours of makeup every day? She told Film Is Now, I've never done prosthetics before. I like that second skin. I like what it brought to me. It's like as soon as I had it on, you feel in character. Once you put it on, on, boom, I felt like Jailer. 
Roger Christian's 2000 box office flop, Battlefield Earth, isn't exactly remembered for its quality, so much as it is for what it did to poor John Travolta. Adapted from the 1982 novel of the same name, Travolta plays Turl, an alien of the breed Cyclos. As the Telegraph noted at the time, the Grease star was decked out in bad teeth, metallic green eyes, flapping brows, nostril tubes, oversized claws, lank dreadlocks hanging down the front, and half a Martha and the Vandellas beehive stuck on the back. The script wasn't any better either, and in the end Battlefield Earth was nominated for 10 Razzies. And the icing on the cake, the flick went on to win Worst Picture of the Decade in 2010, forcing screenwriter J.D. Shapiro to write a lengthy and apologetic letter to the New York Post in a attempt to justify his work on the project. Simon Pegg has made it very clear over the years that he's a die-hard Star Wars fan. So it's no wonder he was so overjoyed after landing a small role in The Force Awakens. To play the role of junk trader Unkar Plutt, the normally slender Pegg was remarkably transformed into the portly-looking character thanks to a combination of makeup, prosthetics, a suit, and digital effects. In an interview with Nerdist, Star Wars creature shop head Neil Scanlon said, I think they did a little bit of CG enhancement on the inside of the mouth, stretched the eyes and stretched the mouth, and gave it that sort of twist to make it feel like it just couldn't be a person in a suit. Despite getting some help from CGI, however, the suit was actually a bit of a debacle. And I had these big rubber, like, silicon gauntlets on which were my fingers. And uh, when I took them off, I could pour the sweat out. Idris Elba joined the Star Trek crew for 2016's Star Trek Beyond, playing an entirely new villain for the franchise, Kroll. Since Kroll's species is so elaborate looking, Elba had to endure countless hours in makeup. He told Entertainment Weekly, Typically, my day would start at 4.15 in the morning, I'd be in the chair until around 7.30, shoot about 8.30, then wake up in the morning and do the whole thing again. I'm claustrophobic, by the way. I don't like rubber masks on my face. Although Sophia Batella's character, Jayla, also required extensive makeup, it was Kroll's design that took the most work in total. Head makeup artist Joel Harlow explained to Inverse how the context of the story helped shape what the monster looked like. He said, A lot of the alien characters were designed for beyond were aquatic in nature. Lots of fins. There were also lizard elements in Kroll too, healer monsters specifically. Just like that, the incredibly handsome hunk that May had been petitioning to become the new James Bond was made completely unrecognizable, thanks to the power of Hollywood and some wicked makeup artistry. Karen Gillan's flowing red locks were nowhere in sight for her turn as the blue-in-the-face part robot villain Nebula, both in Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers franchises. So popular was her small role in the first Guardians flick that by the time 2019's Avengers Endgame came round, she was pretty much front and center, rubbing shoulders with Robert Downey Jr.'s own Tony Stark and Chris Hemsworth's Thor. The actress told The Daily Beast, I feel so lucky that this small character that I played in the first Guardians film got to evolve and develop so much. I'm extremely grateful is the main word. That said, Gillen admitted the costume was hard to wear. In an interview with Variety, she said, It's just a feeling of claustrophobia because I'm completely enclosed. It's a second skin that's glued to me. It's not painted, it's all over, and so I can't really move my face very much, you know? It's a weird sensation, and it's one that isn't the nicest of sensations, but it looks really cool and does help with the character. Quite endearingly, Gillen never thought she would play a superhero movie villain, quipping to Variety, I'm from the top of Scotland in the middle of nowhere. Those are movies from a magical land called Hollywood that doesn't actually exist. Brian Prince was totally transformed as the Predator in 2018's fourth installment of the classic sci-fi franchise, The Predator. Speaking about his part in the movie, he told Den of Geek, I got really lucky. I was originally an art student in Atlanta. I draw comics and do illustrations and stuff. I was in Seattle, Washington in a parkour gym. I've done parkour for nine years. However, Prince wasn't a total newcomer to Hollywood. Having previously used his athletic abilities to snag roles as a stunt extra on the walking Dead, Captain America Civil War, and Black Panther. After showcasing his abilities in a video to the film's producers, the buff parkour vet got a call from the Predator's stunt coordinator. Prince later explained, This creature's a lot more mobile. In the other films, they'd move for sure, but a lot of the times in the first one, there wasn't a lot of agile movements. So with this one, for me, they are throwing me through things. 
Thor Ragnarok director Taika Waititi did far more than just transform the franchise from a heavy-handed comic drama into an 80s-inspired quirky comedy. He also lent his voice for the character of Korg. Speaking to reports at Disney Studios, the Kiwi-born director dished that he had originally wanted Dwayne The Rock Johnson for the role of the hulking beast. However, in The Rock's own words, there wasn't enough chicken and salmon in New Zealand to sustain both him and Chris Hemsworth. So the task of playing Korg fell on Watiti himself. As it turns out, Korg quickly became a fan favorite in the already incredibly well-received flick, due in part to his unique accent. Piss off, ghost! He's freaking gone. Fans have clearly greeted the soft-spoken rock alien with open arms. He had a pretty meaty scene in Avengers Endgame, and we'll be surely looking out for him again in 2021's fourth Thor installment. Thor, Love and Thunder Palm Clementi have joined the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy for the series sequel as the insect-like Mantis, a humanoid alien that sports some crazy anime-looking eyes and antenna on her head. The actress later told Metro, The artists were amazing. I had to wear prosthetics at the beginning of my forehead and the rest was CGI, so it was not hours in makeup. Although the film received some relatively warm reviews, original comic writer and co-creator of the character, Steve Englehart, wasn't too impressed with its take on Mantis. He told Polygon, Well, I was not happy with Mantis's portrayal. The character has nothing to do with Mantis. Well, it turns out that Clementi didn't even read the comics before filming, because director James Gunn told her not to. She revealed to Screen Rant, I wanted to and I asked James if I should, and he said, No, you don't need to, because I knew his version was so different from the pictures and drawings that I saw. Considering she reprised her role in the Avengers franchise and will also star in the third installment of Guardians, it's probably fair to say that the actress has done just fine in the role. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.